Hallelujah. You are blessed. I said you are blessed. All the good things that God has for you shall come to you in Jesus' name. Can I hear a better amen? Amen. Every battle of life, you're winning in Jesus' name. We are going to have dominion by the blood of Jesus. You shall win in the name of Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. The blood of Jesus, the Bible says, it speaks of better things than the blood of Abel. When the blood speaks, destinies are changed. Amen. When before there was a people had to come to the throne of grace and gain access only by the blood of goats and rams and bulls. In Exodus chapter 12, verse 1, they were receiving access. Now the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be your your beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Speak to all the the congregation of Israel, saying, On the tenth of this month, every man shall take for himself a lamp, according to the house of his father, a lamp for a household. And if the household is too small for the lamp, let him and his neighbors next to to his house take it according to the number of the persons, according to each man's need. You shall make your you shall make your count of the lamp. The next verse. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. You may take it from the sheep or from the goods. Now you shall keep it until the 14th day of the same month. Then the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it at twilight. And they shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and on the lintel of the house where they eat it. Then they shall eat of the flesh on that night, roasted in fire with unleaved bread and with bitter herbs, they shall eat it. Say, do not eat it raw, nor boiled at all with water, but roasted in fire, its head with its legs and its entrails. The next verse, you shall eat, shall not, you shall let none of it remain until morning, and what remains until morning you shall burn with fire. It's 11. And thus shall you eat it with a belt on your waist, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. So you shall eat it in, the, in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. For I will pass through the land of Egypt on that night. And I will strike all the fast bones in the land of Egypt both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. The next verse. Now the blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be on you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. The blood of Jesus was for us for protection. In those days when God was passing through and killing every, the the, the angel of death was passing in Egypt, Bible says at that particular time, the only thing that was going to make them be exempted was the blood of Jesus. Amen. The blood of Jesus, when it was shed, it gave us dominion. The blood of Jesus shed for us, gave us dominion. God honored blood to an extent when he showed the blood, he passed. Amen. According to Hebrews chapter 9 verse 7 to 14, the blood was for the atonement of sin. So nobody was permitted to come before God if there's no blood. Praise the Lord. The moment there was blood, there was atonement of sin. Bible says, Hebrews 9 verse 7. 
Give me verse 7. I'm going very fast because I want us to pray by his grace. Amen. Now how much... Uh, Hebrews 9, 7. But in the second part, the high priest went alone once a year, not without blood, which he offered for himself and for the people's sin, committed in ignorance. So when people could sin, the priest could go in before, before the Lord and carry that blood for the atonement of men's sin. Praise the Lord. So that blood began to speak for people. The Bible says the blood of Abel that speaks of better things than the blood, the blood of Jesus that speaks of better things than the blood of Abel. So by the blood of Jesus, when all this was happening, there was no proper atonement. Men were still sinning out of ignorance. Men were still doing wickedness. So God said, I have to look for a better way of setting man free. And so Jesus became the perfect sacrifice. And by that, dominion was given to man. Amen. Blood was not only, not only shed for us to be free from sin, it was also shed for us to have dominion over the forces of hell. Can I hear an amen? So the blood was not shed for any, anybody else. The blood of Jesus was shed for, for you. According to Luke 22, verse number 20, the blood was shed for you. It was for your benefit. Amen. Hallelujah. The Bible says, likewise, he also took the cup after supper saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood which is shed for you. So when you take communion, you're reminding Christ and you're reminding yourself that by this blood that I'm taking, I am delivered from every work of the darkness. It was shed for you. Praise the Lord. Amen. When they pierced him, blood and water came out. For cleansing, I was by the sprinkling of water and by the shedding of blood, we have been made free. Praise the Lord. So that was enough for our redemption. There's power in the blood. They pierce him in John 19, 34. They pierce his side and water gushed out and blood came out. Say, this blood is for these people. So the shedding of his blood was for your freedom. Can I hear an amen here? Blessed be the name of the Lord. That is why when that blood was shed, it was for the purchasing of your life. That's why Paul is saying, I am not of my own. I am bought with the blood. So, the shedding of Christ's blood was for you to be free. It was for your purchase. Because the devil owned you. So, God delivered you when he shed his blood. He owned, he bought you. You are not only born again by you receiving Christ. Christ's blood was for your purchase. Can I hear an amen here? Acts chapter 20 verse 28. It was for my purchase. Glory to God. Therefore, we take heed to our then therefore take heed to yourselves and to all the flock among which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to shepherd the church of God, which is which he purchased with his own blood. That is why the judgment of men of God will be rough than anybody else. The judgment of men of God, pastors, will be harsh. Why? He says, take heed how you take care of God's church, God's flock. Because he did not only give you people, he gave you people that he bought. So, being a pastor is not entertainment. No. It's a higher calling. And the Bible says, you shall be demanded. Everyone's blood will be demanded. <laughs> Sometimes, I look at how Men of God play around and say, this is what, do they know what is coming in, in the future? There is a demand when a soul is getting lost. When a soul, that's what I say, tend to know the state of your flock. Pastoral work is one of the hardest work. He says, not only preach, they say, tend to know the state of your flock. Why? This one, I bought them with my blood. So you don't play with, with them. Amen. I was telling a certain pastor, don't be too excited to be a pastor. It's not a, it's something that you're putting your neck on a wire. Because heaven, Jesus is saying, this one I died for. This one. 
is the one I died for. That's what the Bible is saying. It shall be worse for him. Worse for him who has tasted of the grace and went back. Say, for he shall be beaten but many strokes. You are bought by blood, then you backslide. He said, you shall be beaten many strokes. Are we together? You are bought by the blood, you are misbehaving. Because Christ finished with you. He paid. He also says, if we sin, we, we take him back to the cross to die for us again. Amen. Amen. Through the blood of Jesus, you have been justified. It is the blood of Jesus that brings justification. Romans chapter 5 verse 9. We are justified by the blood. Justified. Nobody can bring us accusation. We are justified by the blood. It says in Romans chapter 5 verse 9, much more than having now been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath through him. So the blood of Jesus delivers me from wrath that is about to come. So we have been just Now the Bible says, not therefore there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Why? Because you have been justified by grace. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Very fast. I will answer one or two, then we finish. One of the things that, that the blood of Jesus gave is the dominion over sin. Dominion over sin. I want to say something here. When one sinner is not because they are weak, it's because they have not activated the power of blood, of the blood of Jesus in their lives. By the blood of Jesus, you have dominion over sin. Are you hearing me? So you falling is you desiring, is you deciding. The blood of Jesus gave us dominion over sin. That's why the Bible is saying, either is born of God does not sin. That's not. Why? You are past the level of sin. So these who are sinning is because you have decided I will not walk in my dominion. Amen. Amen. Romans chapter 3 verse 25. It says, Whom God set forth as a appropriation by his blood through faith. To demonstrate his righteousness. Because in his forbearance, God had passed over the sins that were previously committed. Give me another version. He said, by his blood, God, super, God gave us power. He overlooked. He dealt with the sins we committed before. Now from there, there is no sin in man. The one we commit is the one we've needed to do it. Hallelujah. He says, God presented Christ as a sacrifice of atonement through the shedding of his blood to be received by faith. He did this to demonstrate his righteousness because in his forbearance he had left the sins committed beforehand and punished. He's saying by this, God left the sins that we did. He said, this is for the sins you did before the blood was shed. That one you're forgiven. That one, there's no punishment. That is why when somebody gets saved, there's no condemnation. Nobody is permitted to condemn them because of their past sin. But now if you continue in sin and you are under the blood, you have been bought, you are now born again and you continue in blood, there is beating. There is punishment for such a soul. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That now you have come under the blood, now you are free, but you continue in sin. Ah, for the wages of sin is and the gift of God is eternal life. Romans 3.23. So by his blood you are delivered from sin. Say I'm free from sin. That is why through the blood we receive the redemption. We received our redemption. One, justification. Two, we received our redemption. Ephesians 1 verse 7. We received our redemption. We received our redemption and forgiveness of sin. The blood came. And God said, every sin they have ever committed is now abolished. They are free. There's no judgment. We cannot judge them by the past. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 
In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his glory. He says, through him we have redemption through his blood. So I have been redeemed by the blood of Jesus. His blood has set me free. I am no longer under sin. That blood was shed. I am sin was no longer a, me- I was no longer a member of sin. Or sin had no place or has no place in me until now. So by the blood of Jesus, I am free. I have been redeemed. I have been delivered. I have been set free from sin. Sin shall not have dominion over you. That's what Paul is saying. The Bible is saying, sin has no dominion over you. Sin has no dominion. So why? Because you are free from it. The blood of Jesus took away, gave you dominion over sin. So whoever sinned, that's what the Bible says, the soul that sinned shall die. For the wages of sin is dead. So the soul that sinned shall die. So the moment you start sinning, two things die. Number one, your relationship with God dies. Your spiritual life dies. Anyone that lives in sin, check their life. Their spiritual life start dying. They cannot pray as before. They cannot fast as before. They don't get revelation through the scriptures when they read. They start dying from them. Their spiritual work with God begins to dwindle. Why? Because when sin came, Adam lost connection with God. God used to visit him. That's the last time Adam had an encounter with God. Till Adam died. Adam never heard from God. God never visited him. Adam's connection with God ended in the Garden of Eden. From there, Bible says that Adam began to labor. Adam began to work. He, went, he began to till the land. Why? That which God was making. Adam never used to work. God was providing. Because he was spiritual. The moment sin came, it separated him from God. The moment sin is in your life, it separates your spiritual life. It separates you from God. Amen. Spirituality dies. And if you continue, you go, that's why <laughs> Bible is saying in Isaiah, return to the Lord, oh ye backsliders. He's not talking about people who are not born again. He's saying backslider. He says, return to the Lord in weeping and in, te- in crying. He says, restore your heart back to him. Meaning what? You are still born again, but you no longer feel God's presence. You are a Christian by the virtue of you come to church, but you don't have a buoyant walk with God because sin kills the spirit man in you. It, it, amputed, it amputates your spiritual man. So you are there. You are praying. But there are a level you don't ascend in the things of God. Can I hear an amen here? Sin is dangerous. So Jesus bought you. Say now all the sins you have ever committed are forgiven you. There is no punishment. There is no judgment. There is no condemnation. But from here, as you continue, there will be punishment for your sin. Things start dying. So the first thing that dies is your spiritual, your spiritual life begins to die. Number two, your consciousness begins to die. Consciousness. That thing that makes you t- hey, dies. That's why somebody can lie today, lie again, lie again, lie again. Their consciousness has died. That thing that makes you return. Say, hey, no. This one. Mm-mm. This deal I'm doing is not a good one. The way I'm going to make this business, this money to this business is a shrewd way. So there are people there who say their consciousness has been seared with hot iron. No consciousness. When sin is present, your consciousness dies. I, am I communicating? You can slander, you can drink alcohol, you can do anything, and you don't feel anything. You are told to stop. Your consciousness has died, so you don't hear anything. You can insult your husband over turn him. And you feel nothing. Say, I'm going to be a royal. Atafanya. Atafanya. kufe. Your consciousness is dead. You know what I'm doing is wrong. And you're doing it. And you don't bother. Number three. Every blessing of the Lord in your life begins to die. The blessings begins to die. You are doing well yesterday. Things were flowing. Adam, 
God, Adam was waking up in the morning. Every tree in the field was producing fruit. Every tree. There's no day that there was, there was no rain. There was no rain those days. Obviously, there was no rain or dew because there was no one to till the land. So there was no rain, there was no dew. Kind of, but everything was green. God told him, you shall drink, eat of any, only any, any fruit from any tree. The man did not labor. He was waking up and said, you monkey, come this way. Lion, disappear. The man's work was, and in the evening, God could come. The day he sinned, immediately, he took Jembe and he began to till. Hard labor entered. And because of that hard labor, it made Cain to be angry with God. He said, I've worked hard. The whole year, I am bringing my sacrifice. And God, you're refusing. And you're accepting my brother's heaven. I'm not happy. Why? Because they never, they never, their father told them, we never used to labor. There was water flowing. Everything was there. There was a, there was a river that was used to bring a gold. Everything was fine. But now we must labor. We must look for water. We must make sure the farm is giving us. The cattle must produce. Ah, ah, labor! What you are not working for was coming by grace. Now it must, it must come by labor. Sin is dangerous. I said last time, anytime there is sin, something dies. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Colossians chapter 1 verse 14. I stop here, we pray for the conference. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. In Colossians 1 14 it says, In whom we have redemption through his blood, and the forgiveness of sin. Give me verse 20. You are forgiven by his blood. We are free. Amen. Give me verse 20. And by him to reconcile all things to himself. By him, whether things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, having made peace through the blood of his cross made peace. God made sure there was atonement. We are justified. So, you have, sin has no dominion in your life. Are you hearing me? That's why when you sin, God wonders, what are you doing? I dealt with this thing. I gave you power over it. This thing should not control you. should control it. Do you know why Christians will be judged harshly? Even the world will be judged harshly. It's because what you need for your redemption has already been done. You're already free from the battles that you're supposed to be fighting. Amen. Bible says it's like a dog that goes back to the vomit. We're going back to sin. We are giving dominion. We are, give, we are, we are giving the devil dominion over what we are supposed to dominate over him. I'm above sin, but I'm giving sin leeway in my life. Amen. You have dominion. Number two dominion you have is dominion over sickness and disease. Dominion over sickness and disease. By the blood of Jesus. We'll pick it up on Sunday. By the blood of Jesus. You have dominion over sickness and disease. When Jesus died, shed his blood, healing came forth. Healing was released. So no one is supposed to be sick because the blood of Jesus has set us free from the power of sickness. Shout amen. Shout hallelujah. One of my mentors said, the word of God will never work until you realize it can work. It is only when you know what can work that God makes it work. Praise the Lord. If you're sick, what is the covenant? What is God saying concerning my sickness or this situation? That is what gives you dominion over it. By his stripes we were healed. I think it's First Peter 2, 24. By his stripes we were healed. So I'm not going to be healed. I was already healed. So I need to walk in the power of the scripture to have dominion over sickness. Now, in other words, God wanted us to live a sickness-free life here on earth. Say amen. It shall be your portion. Amen. Say a louder amen. amen. As, we, as, 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 as we finish with that, I want you to know that also, this is very 
important for us. That even as we come on this, uh, this season of Passover and Easter, it's not only a, a, a part or a time to pass. It is a time for us to take back what is ours, our rightful place in Christ, and walk in total dominion. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, I learned this one time. Anything you pray for, you get a space. You have a portion in it. He says, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper. Say, they shall prosper. They pray for Jerusalem. He said, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Then you shall prosper. So when you pray for the peace of Jerusalem, they are, your portion of prosperity is there. Elizabeth was praying for the coming of Messiah. God did not tell her, you will see Messiah. It was Simeon that God told that you shall not die until you have seen the redemption of Israel. So when Jesus was born, I think it's Luke chapter 2. When Jesus was born, the Bible says, now she, he took the child and said, my eyes have seen my king. Now I, your servant can depart in peace. Well, he was still talking to God and the mother of Jesus. Obviously. And Elizabeth came down. I think it's Hannah. Elizabeth came down and, is, and held Jesus. Prophecy. Bible says she was in the temple praying. She was 84 years praying and fasting, serving God in fasting and prayer. And bam! Because she was praying for the coming of Jesus, the redemption of Israel, she had a portion in it. She received Christ. Her eyes saw Christ. In that generation, it is only Simeon and Elizabeth that saw Jesus. The rest, who are of old, never saw him. Why? Anything you pray for, God gives you a portion in it. It's the way you are praying, oh God bless some of us. Whatever God drops for sound of abundance, God gives you a portion. Anyone, that's why it's like this. Anyone you bring to church, God cannot bless them and leave you. No. You are the one. You are the, he says the laborer is what you have his wages. He says the laborer is the first partaker of the fruit. So whatever you are laboring for or in, you are the first one to receive the promise. So you must find your spot. You must find your spot. You see, I have realized something about God. God has so many systems or so many ways of blessing a man. There are things God will give you by prayer. Others God will give you by, by fasting. Others he will give you by righteousness. Others he will give you by pure heart. Others he will give you by blessing others. Others he will give you by witnessing, by evangelism. God has different systems of blessing men. It's not one way. Me confess, I'm fasting for myself and my family. God to remember me. There's another blessing when you bring somebody else. Philip had an encounter with God that nobody ever had an encounter. Are you hearing me? Philip was telling people, come, 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 come. As Philip was bringing people, Philip is the only one that, only man in the Bible that disappeared and appeared. This, the man is here now. He finds himself in, in, in Machakos. By the time you open your eyes, he's back. But look at his ministry. He's the only man in the Bible among the disciples of Jesus that the mantle of the prophetic fell upon all his children. All his children. But look at Philip. He was busy evangelizing Christ. The man had asked. Peter himself never had that kind of encounter. Anything you pray for, God gives you a portion in it. Philip was baptizing the Ethiopian eunuch. Put him in water. By the time he brought him out. One day I tried that. I said, how many seconds did it take to put somebody in and out? By then the man is coming back. Philip is in his house taking coffee. Look at that speed. Philip is in his house. They found him in his house. With his five daughters prophesy. And he was on the shoulder. God is good. Amen. Amen. Anything you pray for. God gives you a portion. Anyone that you say, sir, let's go to church. As that person comes, you have a portion in it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That's why Paul told Timothy, this issue of your stomach, 
do the work of an evangelist. Go out, spread the gospel. Before he told him that, he told him, take little wine. Because you're lazy, take wine. But he said, the only best way for you to overcome this is your sickness. Do evangelism. He said, do the work of an evangelist. And the moment Timothy began that, there's no in the Bible that Timothy died by a disease. It left him. Rise on your feet.